Hello physicists, in this video we're going to be talking about the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, so the rectangular coordinate system is quite easy to comprehend. So let's say you had three perpendicular axes. Okay, I'm going to draw it sort of like this. These three perpendicular axes are known as the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And they constitute all of space. All right, so any point in space can be represented by these axes. And it's very, very helpful to have what is known as a right-handed coordinate system. All right, in physics, it's very important to simplify all your expressions by using a right-handed coordinate system. When how you determine if a coordinate system is right-handed is that if I had a finger, you would use a right-hand rule. And I'm going to just draw it for you. So if I had a finger, okay? So if I had a finger, all right, so this is pointing straight towards me. This is pointing to the left. If I had a finger and all my fingers can make the shape where the index finger is the X, then the index finger is the direction of the X axis. Your, um, your middle finger is your Y axis and their thumbs is the axis. And if you can align the axis so that it matches your right hand like that, then you have what is known as a right-handed coordinate system. Okay? So for example, if I were to put the x, y, and z axis such that, such that the positive x axis is here, the positive y axis is here, and the positive z axis is here, then you could show that it is a right-handed coordinate system because if you were to try to point in the x-axis with your index finger, your y-axis with your middle finger, and your z-axis with your thumb, then it won't hurt. It's natural. So this is a right-handed coordinate system, and it's very good to have a right-handed coordinate system. So this is the rectangular system, also known as the Cartesian system. Okay, so these are all perpendicular to each other and they have the x, y, and z axes. And what we're gonna do is define vectors. We're gonna define three unique vectors. Vectors i, j, and k. i will define i to be magnitude one, and it's in the direction of the positive x-axis. So it's in the positive x-direction. We'll define j with magnitude 1, and it's in the positive y-axis. k will be in the positive z-direction, and it's in the... and it's magnitude 1. So k is magnitude 1 in the positive z-direction. So we define i, j, k, and these are known as the standard, the standard basis, the standard unit vectors. So these are unit vectors because they're all magnitude one. Okay, and if I were to take the dot product of i and j, j and k, k and i, and any combination in any combination, then, then because all of them are orthogonal to each other, okay, orthogonal just means perpendicular, okay, if all of them are perpendicular to each other, then the cosine of the angle between them is zero, because cosine of 90 is zero. 
So you can see all of them are perpendicular to each other. And what we can do is represent all vectors as a vector sum of multiples of i and j. So let's take a look in two dimensions. Okay, so let's get rid of everything here and let's just consider two directions. So this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. Okay? Now let's say it's a vector a and you're gonna drag and drop it such that the the um that such that the tail is at the at the origin. Okay? So this is your origin. This is vector a. Okay, what you can do is visualize it as a vector sum of mul some real number multiple of i and j. Okay, so this is i, this is j, then vector a is this plus this. So we, what we can do is cleverly express A as a sum of two vectors. One is in the horizontal direction and one straight in the vertical direction. Okay? So if this is the angle. If we define theta as the angle between A and the x-axis, then this is the right angle, this is horizontal, the right one's horizontal, the vertical one is vertical. So this is a right angle, they're perpendicular. Then this is clearly not unit one. This is clearly not um, a unit vector, but instead some real number multiple of i, since it's in the same direction. So let's call this a x i. Okay, AXI. So AX is some real number. And we're gonna we're gonna find out soon how to find AX. Okay. This is AYJ. Remember, these component vectors, okay, these um, horizontal and vertical vectors are not of unit length one. So they have to be some scalar multiple unless um, in special cases. So ay and ax are some real number. Okay, ax and ay are some real number. And using right tri triangle trigonometry, you can use the sine and cosine functions to find out that the component ax, these are called ax and ay, these numbers are called x and y components, respectively, a vector a. And ax is equal to a cosine of theta, and a y is equal to a sine of theta. So a x and a y are called the components of a, the x and y components. And you can represent a as a vector sum. a x i plus a y j. a x i plus a y j. Now if you know the components of the vector, but not the vector itself, then the magnitude of vector a is equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared. And you can easily see from the Pythagorean theorem that's true. Remember, this is a right triangle over here. This is a right triangle. So if you use the Pythagorean theorem, then you can easily express the magnitude of a, the length of vector a, as the length of as um, ax and ay, okay? And the angle theta, you could use trigonometry as well, the inverse tangent of ay over ax. ay over ax. And you might be wondering, the magnitude thing, why isn't i or j there? Well, the magnitude of i and j are the magnitudes are defined to be 1. So 
ax and ay squared will automatically just make the expression true. So ax and ay are known as the x and y components of a respectively. So we can see that any two-dimensional vector a can be represented as a sum of unit vectors i and j when multiplied by some real number. The real number could also be 1. Okay, you can also have i plus j create a new vector. So any real number times i plus any real number times j can express any vector as a sum of i and j when multiplied by a real number. Now, let's say that we have a vector. Let's say we had a vector. Ooh. Okay, so this is a vector. Is there x direction? Is there y direction? So let's say you had a vector r. And vector r is equal to i minus 3j. So what we want to do is find the magnitude of r and the direction, this angle theta over here. Okay, so what can we do? Now we're given the x and y components respectively. ax, not ax, but we should write rx is given as 1 and ry is negative 3. Okay, any real number includes negative numbers as well. A negative number just means it's either to left or downward. So there's nothing to fear if you know the coordinate systems well. Now, r is equal to rx squared, square root of rx squared plus ry squared, which is equal to 1 squared plus negative 3 squared. And negative, any number squared is positive, so there's no worry of a negative number in there, as long as, as long as it is squared. And this equals 1 plus 9, square root of 1 plus 9 is square root of 10. So the magnitude of r is the square root of 10, and the direction, theta, well, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 3 over 1. Okay, opposite over adjacent. So if I were to take the inverse tangent of negative 3, we would get... We would get negative 71.5. 6 degrees. Okay, it's negative because it's below the x-axis. Okay, so that's how the tangent function is defined, you know, from math. So it's negative because it's below the x-axis. So when you have when you have the component of a vector given in this form, i minus 3j, i plus 3j, any sum of some not real number times i, plus or minus some real number times j, you can easily find important properties of the vector. Now, okay, now let's try to extend this to three dimensions. Okay, so let's see. We have, well, let's draw our three axes. These are our three axes. We'll define this to be the x direction, this to be the y direction, and this to be the z direction. Okay? Now, you could apply the same logic here that we can express any vector. Any vector a 
as the sum of the three unit vectors. Now, k is involved here as well. Okay, so I'm just going to draw this just so you can see the connection visually. Okay, so what I've drawn here, this is AX times I. So we have the X component. We have the Y component. We also have a Z component here. AZ times K. Okay, so AZ times K. So, when we have an X component, a Y component, Z component, you can easily derive an expression using the Pythagorean t theorem twice. You can easily derive an expression for the magnitude of A. Okay? So, A equals AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. Okay, and A, the vector A, is equal to AX I plus AY J plus AZ K. Okay, so AX I plus AY J plus AZ K. For AX, AY, and AZ are any real numbers. Are any real numbers. Okay, so if we had vector R equals 2i minus 3j plus k, we, we can find the magnitude of R. The direction is a little more tricky to find, but but we can easily find the magnitude, okay? So the magnitude of R is equal to the X component of R plus the Y component of R plus the Z component of R. And that is equal to two squared plus negative three squared plus one squared. And that is equal to four plus 9 plus 1. Okay, and that is equal to the square root of 14. So the magnitude of this factor is equal to the square root of 14. And next video we'll see how all these vectors in unit, how all the operations we described previously can apply to vectors written in this unit vector notation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.